On October 4th, 2007, Crash fans were treated with the latest game in the series, Crash of the Titans. This game received a metric fuckload of hate and killed the childhoods of many, despite those same people still being children. <coughs> but little did those Crash fans know that the following year would be the release of Crash's final game before going on a near decade long hiatus. And that last game was a sequel to Titans. Hello ladies and gentlemen, my name is Loatin, and we're back with yet another Crash Bandicoot review. Last time we talked about Crash of the Titans, a game that was, uh, kinda good? I mean, it has aspects that I really admire, no doubt about it, but it was ultimately a really, really boring game. So imagine my delight when I found out this game was getting a sequel, Crash Mind Over Mutant. A game that I was... kinda hyped for? While I loved Titans and thought it was a good game at the time, I honestly don't remember being that excited for Mind Over Mutant. I remember seeing commercials for it and wanting to play it, but it didn't really excite me as much as Titans did, and I couldn't tell you why. Maybe it had to do with the fact that I wanted a classic styled Crash game rather than another beat em up. Or maybe that my hype was primarily focused on Sonic Unleashed. But hey, I still got it anyway, I'm a Crash Bandicoot fan so I just had to. And when I got it, I honestly didn't like it that much. It really didn't resonate with me the same way Titans did upon first play. So, I honestly wasn't that excited to come back to this game for this review. So, imagine my shock when I turned on the game, played it, and had a much more enjoyable time than I did playing Titans? Yeah, I have to admit here, contrary to how I felt as a kid, this game is actually pretty dope, and honestly, what Titans should have been. Crash Mind Over Mutant, instead of being a linear 3D beat-em-up, goes for a more explorative approach. No longer are you going from level to level, but are now being sent on certain tasks for you to accomplish in this world. I would call this an open world, but Mind Over Mutant still has a fixed camera angle along with loading screens. Basically, it's built like Twin Sanity, but doesn't play like Twin Sanity if you catch my drift. Crash and the other mutants control pretty much the same way as they did in Titans, with many improvements, which I will touch upon. First off, Crash's combat has been improved tremendously. Now having combos and quick time dodges, fighting with Crash has never felt better. One improvement I absolutely loved was Crash's iconic spin attack. In Titans, I complained that the spin only worked for a certain amount of time before Crash gets dizzy. Not to mention, you have to twirl the left analog stick to activate it, leading me to never wanting to use it. In Mind Over Mutant though, the spin feels so good to use. For one, you can activate the spin by using the right analog stick, making it more quick and snappy to activate. And while Crash still gets dizzy, at least you've given an indication for how much time you have before he gets dizzy. On top of that, all mutants can now jump, in addition to being pocketed. At first, this scared me. One of the things that Titans did right was create a good balance between platforming with Crash and fighting with mutants. Sometimes I get bored of playing as a mutant, and at that point I just want to be Crash, which is why the mutants couldn't jump in that game. There were moments where you had to play as Crash, which allowed for a smooth pacing. But Mind Over Mutant decides to completely destroy that balance with the ability to jump in pocket mutants. And I was afraid that it would kill the flow of the game. But much to my surprise, this actually works really well. Now I can jump with mutants and take them with me through platforming obstacles, and the developers cleverly added obstacles to work with the mutants, making the platform with you extremely fun. Along with the old mutants, we also get a variety of new mutants as well, including this weird physic fish thing that straight up does a Michael Jackson dance routine. <laughs> what a loser! What kind of idiot impersonates Michael Jackson?
okay, I take back what I said. And while I love the mutants here, there's one thing about this game that really, really grinds my gears. The arbitrary bullshit amount of backtracking used to pad out the game. I fucking hate this. Basically, every level in the game is linked to Crash's house, and every time you complete a mission and have to go to a different area, you don't get to teleport there, oh no. You have to manually walk there, going back through the same obstacles as before. Why? It literally serves no purpose other than to pad out the game, and it sucks. What's even more aggravating is that there are points where the game teleports you to specific location without having to walk to it. Like, what? Why couldn't they all be like this? This is probably the worst part of the game. Don't get me wrong, I don't mind when there's backtracking in a video game, but there's a right way and a wrong way to do it. The right way to do it is by adding new things to the level that weren't there before to create a new experience. The wrong way to do it is by, well, doing nothing at all. Adding nothing to change up the level you literally just traversed through. And this is what makes backtracking so tedious. This brings the game down tremendously, as Crash Mind of a Mutant does this a lot. And it got to the point where I literally found myself getting stuck in some areas and having to look at a walkthrough to get out. I'm sorry to get all negative at the end of this review, but hey, I can't recommend this game. I was honestly enjoying myself until I saw a rhino roller spawned right there for me to jack, essentially saying that all the time I just spent trying to get a rhino roller went down the fucking drain. And when there's this much backtracking, regardless of how many improvements it makes over its predecessor, it's not enough to fix what is a very blatant issue. It sucks too because when you do get to the newer levels, they're actually really fun. A lot better than Titans, dare I say. But like the Sonic Adventure games, you have to go through a lot of bullshit in order to get to those levels. If there's anything else I can say, I like the story, kinda. I like the fact they brought back Embryo and made him literally the best character in the entire game. I, I'm not even joking, he's hilarious here. I like the fact that Cortex betrays Zuka Uka as it makes Cortex more of a threatening force this time around. I'm kinda mixed on the cutscenes though. Each cutscene is done in a completely different art style. On one hand, I love this. It gives Mind Over Mutant a charming personality. On the other hand, it's inconsistent. It kinda bums me out that we don't get to see Embryo's model in full detail. He has a model in the game, you just don't get to see it. The only time you do is in the crunch boss fight, and even then, you get a really, really small glimpse of it to the point that you basically don't see it at all. Like, what was the point of this, really? Crash Mind Over Mutant is a hard game to recommend. Even though I vastly prefer this game over Titans, I think the backtracking really weighs the game down. I personally think the tedious nature of it would really drive away any new players. These games are interesting anomalies. On one hand, I have a lot of nostalgia for them. But on the other hand, I can definitely see why people hate them. I'm not against change, don't get me wrong, but if they wanted to change it up a bit, they should have just added some new mechanics to the established formula like what Crash 4 did, rather than changing that formula entirely. I love the Crash Bandicoot Mutant games. I also hate the Crash Bandicoot Mutant games. But most importantly, I wish they didn't kill Crash Bandicoot for the nine years he was dead for. So next time we talk about Crash Bandicoot, we are going to be talking about the spin-off in handheld games. Spin-off, handheld racing, basically all the extraneous crap. And then I'm going to talk about Crash 4 and then so on and so forth. Um, but I have to say something first. I am going to be taking a little bit of a break from Crash Bandicoot. Don't get me wrong, I love this series and I love making these videos, but I am super burnt out from this orange marsupial. I've actually been wanting to get into the Sonic games as of recently. If you haven't watched it yet, I actually did make a review on the Sonic Adventure games, which you can click to see right there. But uh, aside from that, I need to take a break from Crash. 
trust me, I promise this will not be the last you'll hear of Crash Bandicoot on this channel. It's just that I need a break from him. So the next review isn't going to be Crash related, but stay tuned for more Crash videos soon. With all that said, I'm the Lowitzen17. Thank you for watching.